As car enthusiasts, we dream of one day owning a nice big garage. Even if we currently already own a garage, there's always nicer garages out there. So I took a trip up and down the East Coast to visit some of my friends that own way nicer garages than I do. These are four of my favorite garages, shown in no particular order. Hey, my name is Ed Boley and welcome to VinWiki in our studio and the garage that happens to be right below it. The garage is about 3,000 square feet and fits eight to nine cars if you're creative. It's a four bay garage with kind of a, an outdoor kitchen area between them, which makes it perfect. So my son and my wife stay away and I've got space for my stuff. I don't do a lot of wrenching on the cars here. Most of the time I've got experts for that that are awesome and I've known for years and developed relationships with. So the garage is primarily used for storage. I drive all the cars as much as I possibly can. I mean, I probably put 15 to 20,000 exotic car miles on my cars per year. And right now it's spread amongst a few different ones, but to me, it's all about getting them out and driving. One of the really cool features of the garage is these barn doors for these two bays, which are obviously two and a half deep. And when we moved in, these were non-powered and several people came out and said there was no good way to electrify them with openers. And it was a little bit of a pain, especially on a rainy day like today, to have to get out, pin them open, drive out, come back in. And so I had a couple of people come out that said they thought it could be done. So over the last few weeks, we've been experimenting with different configurations of these powered openers that are essentially gate openers mounted in reverse. And at the moment, it's working quite well. And obviously, when you have restricted access, it can be really annoying because you just feel like you drive the cars less, but this has made it very user friendly. This is my favorite car. It's a 2007 Lamborghini Murcielago LP640. It's one of 28 US cars that has a true manual gearbox. That's always been my favorite. This is the fifth Mercy that I've owned and I just absolutely love them. In terms of being a big and outrageous sports car, there's really nothing better. A car that's missing right now because it's up at Esoteric getting all detailed and paint corrected and everything for a project they're working on is my 2009 Ferrari 430 Scuderia and it'll be back in a couple of weeks. This is my Porsche 993 that we're actually about to give away on our YouTube channel as a million subscriber celebration. We're, when we hit a million subscribers on the VinWiki YouTube channel, which will probably be the next two to three months, we're actually gonna give it to one of our VinWiki app users who has more than 25 posts. Behind me, we have the Cannonball cars. So obviously one of the things that I've been known for is setting the Cannonball record, the drive from New York to Los Angeles in 2013, Dave Black, Dan Wong, and myself set the fastest time ever in that at 28 hours, 50 minutes. I don't drive any of those all that much, but it's nice to have them around and versus having to store them elsewhere. So that's one of the great things about having a big garage at your house. Sometimes in Metro Atlanta, it's hard to find lots big enough to actually build like a metal building or something large enough to have all the fun we wanna have with cars, but this worked out perfectly. There's another bay over here. Sometimes I can park a car sideways here. At the moment, it's the golf cart. But past that is a Mercedes S65 AMG that I've used as a you know occasional daily driver. Honestly, I daily the Mercy most of the time. One of the great things about living in Georgia, you got big roads, big parking lots, and things like that. But perhaps the most useful thing about the garage is actually not the garage at all. It's right up these stairs. So another need as replacing the VinWiki headquarters was a place to shoot videos. And so we obviously wanted to look like a grungy old warehouse, but in fact, it's a spare bedroom, but uh, it's just various, you know, wheels, broken parts, things, spare keys, stickers, things of that nature that we use to kind of set an ambiance for people to sit in this chair and tell their best car stories. And so we started the YouTube channel about two and a half years ago, and I guess we're just about to hit a million subscribers, which has been, absolutely crazy and unexpected. I never set out to become a YouTuber, but it became sort of the best video content marketing strategy that we ever could have dreamt of.
What's going on guys? My name is Ryan Scott and this is my garage. So the garage is actually 33 by 38 feet. So it's 33 feet wide and 38 feet deep. Um, that was something I actually planned out too because I wanted to be able to fit, it is, if you guys can see here, it actually has three garage bay doors, but I wanted to be able to fit six cars in it if I needed to, plus be able to have something nice like the garage cabinets here. So that's something I actually laid out beforehand and I wanted to make sure I had enough ceiling height. So this is actually designed for lift. There's five inches of concrete below me here. I was very specific in how I wanted the garage laid out as in insulation and being out here in the cold and heat. So this whole garage is insulated and I made sure to add sockets all over. If you look behind me or up in the corners, you'll see sockets all over. So we have two Alpine Silver uh, Toyota Supras, both are Mark IVs. My personal Supra is a 95, and then my wife's Supra here, which is a 93 and a half. Um, as you guys can tell, I'm restoring that right now. That is going to be completely resprayed, Alpine Silver, the works. We're putting a new VVTi 2JZ motor in it. We are doing a single turbo. And then there's my car, 50 Shades of Grey. Uh, it is a T56 Magnum, OS Geiken built rear end. Uh, you name it, this car has it. It just had a dyno and it made 882 wheel horsepower and 730 foot pounds of torque. And yes, it is fast and yes, it is scary. And it is amazing every time I drive it. So welcome to my garage. It is heaven for me. This is what I consider heaven. Uh, as you guys can see, I have both my supers here. Well, actually this one's my wife's and then we've got my super here and we've got parts everywhere laying on the ground right now. The car ripped apart here. This car is actually going for paint. Uh, so that's why it's all ripped apart right now. Uh, this is my personal Supra. This one is done. This one does run unlike this one. Uh, this is the 800 horsepower beast. This is a six speed manual T56 Magnum E85. You name it, it has it. We've got my normal work set up here. We've got parts laid across the floor here. Uh, this is the normal working table for me. I've got stuff from her car that's just strewn everywhere right now. We've got her new motor here. This is a 2JZ VVTi motor. Uh, we've got the rest of my air pump system. We've got the engine hoist here and the old non-turbo motor, which is for sale. I got to get rid of this yet. I just keep a little bit of collection of parts over here. They've got her hood over here too. This is the best part. This is the toolboxes, this is where I keep all my tools. I've got my TV because you need a TV in your garage, especially when you have your friends over. Um, so the biggest thing for me here is I use this cabinet a lot because this has a lot of my random tools, which then get stuck apparently. Uh, this is where I keep most of the random stuff. Like I have brake lines in here, but just random like proprietary tools, like this little tool here, I use a ton. The drawer you're probably gonna use even more than that. Metric, because I work on Japanese cars, that's it. A ton of metric stuff. I've got every wrench, every socket, everything you can think of, um, anything to do with metric. Now I do have some SAE stuff, but not a whole lot, uh, which is down this bottom one. This is, that's about the gist of SAE stuff that I get into just because I don't work anything American for the most part. I use this big guy here for just about everything. It doesn't matter if it's designed for a half inch, I get a step down and use it for quarter inch stuff just because this literally does everything you could imagine as long as you have the room for it. You never realize how much you need like spray paint or grease or something like that, but I keep all that stuff up here. This has like acetone and stuff, all that good things in it, paint, which I get a ton of this from Advance Auto. Uh, paint I use a lot and I go up there because I'm always running out of it because you need something to get this sprayed or that, which I did this, these parts the other day, I need to spray these black, which I just used that for. I always wanted a fridge <laughs> in my garage because I, uh, I do like to have a beverage here and there. So this is something I was very happy to finally have. Uh, my old townhouse didn't allow room for something like this. And it makes the wife happy that I get to keep all my stuff out here uh, and not take up her lovely refrigerator inside. This was a nice little addition that I really wanted. Uh, if your hands are dirty and stuff, you got grease or grime. Having this out here instead of trying to go inside the house each and every time, this made my life a lot easier. I don't have to go in there and listen to her get mad at me when I clean my hands and get all the grease and grime everywhere. Having this has been quite nice, plumbing the water out here and having hot water for a change instead of using the outside water when it is 10 degrees outside, not much fun. Hey, my name's Matt Mormon. This is Obsessed Garage. So I've been uh, doing Obsessed Garage since 2014. I started uh, making videos as a form of therapy. 
as a way to get out of my own head shortly after I was diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder, as you can tell, <laughs> I think. Technically, I'm Obsessed Garage and I haven't built my garage at my house yet, so this is my pole barn dedicated wash bay. Uh, so this is my house and then uh, OGHQ, my headquarters, is a mile down the road. Uh, so this, this area is 1,200 square feet, so it's 30 by 40. And then the room back here, the concept was that I wanted a place to put my microfiber towels and it turned into this here, uh, where the room is uh, roughly 20 by 15. Uh, so you can't pull a car in, the, in there behind me, but you know, it, it is a great place to hang out and, and uh, prepare all of my washing stuff. The lighting I have out here is all uh, outside in the wash area is fluorescent uh, and we have vapor, vapor type or vapor sealed fixtures. But it's an extremely color accurate uh, fluorescent bulb that are at 6500 Kelvin is the color temp, which is way outside of what you would normally put on a, in, a, in, a, um, in, a, in a home garage or in a home. Like, for instance, your home will have 2700K, so it'll be much more yellow. Uh, part of the reason for that, that, that bluer hue, is it's more like daylight, uh, but it also helps with bugs out here. The bugs aren't as attracted to that daylight color temp. been so fortunate and gotten so lucky that I had you know, major issues with uh, obsessive compulsive disorder including being medicated and having to go to many many hours of therapy to battle this this constant worry and need to keep things tidy and organized I've by accident uh, figured out how to impart some of those tendencies and channel it for good rather than evil. Sharing it with the world, sharing it with you guys that are here, you know, on this video, uh, and and hopefully some can understand, you know, where I'm coming from with these tendencies. That you know, OCD for me is real, and it's it's always even in this video, it's ever present in the back of my mind. I'm having to battle, you know, different tendencies, and so channeling that toward passion has been extremely helpful for me. I'm no longer medicated. I'm no longer you know, suffering every second of every day. Um, I only suffer maybe half the day now. So it's real, it stinks, but, uh, but it's made me who I am. For now, this is where I park my cars at my house. This is a roughly 1,200 square foot pole barn that was designed for an RV for the previous owner that I've turned into a dedicated wash bay. So my M3 normally sits here. The bubble there is to protect my GT3 RS from uh, rodents because the wiring harness is uh, soy based. We have a Mosmatic boom pole so I have instant access to washing anytime I need uh, and that's powered by a, a really really fancy uh, Krenz the pressure washer here on wall. I have uh, tools for working around the house and all kinds of detailing supplies, microfiber towels, the cabinet. I need to figure out some sort of solution to put my dirty towels. I always throw them on top of my little baby air compressor. I don't do a lot of work out here anymore because of OGHQ, uh, but mostly washing. So I have all my detailing stuff here to take care of with all the normal maintenance of the cars. But if I'm gonna do a full detail, it'll be back at HQ. This is where I shoot videos to install. As you can see, the top of the top, there's a lot of carbon fiber that needs to go on. A roll bar for my uh, for my GT3 RS and the rear uh, splitter for the uh, for a, I have a Corvette Z06. But believe it or not, we do I do a lot of work in here on a scissor lift. Um, this is a twin bush uh, scissor lift, which believe it or not comes up to about here. It'll come up to 72 inches. I'm 6'2", so it goes up to almost my height. When I'm polishing a car, I can get all the way around it, but I could also drop a transmission if I wanted to, or change an exhaust, or, or do any work under the car. Cabinets are from a company called the Sonic Tools out of the Netherlands. Check this out, you gotta see this. This is cool. So all the tools have, have uh, inserts. I have 20 plus drawers of like my dream stuff. Uh, and believe it or not, I've probably used everything, even the three-quarter inch drive. I've used this uh, just the other day. 
So all the tools in here get used quite often and uh, I just spend a lot of time and energy keeping this place clean. Uh, having stainless steel countertops and being obsessed is one of those things that requires a lot of effort. I used to design home theater and so I have uh, my old Klipsch, Klipsch speakers in the corners and on, this, on, the, on the top here and the center channel and then a Velodyne subwoofer. The airlines in this place are, uh, are from a company called Prevost that I discovered at SEMA about three years ago. Uh, and then we have Cox hose reels uh, and a l massive piston Jenny compressor. Uh, this will deliver about uh, 30 CFM, so five horsepower, two stage monster, uh, and an air dryer for when I'm doing polishing. I want good, clean, dry air. In Central Florida, we have a lot of humidity. I also have an extractor for changing oil and, uh, and again, pretty much every tool that I could ever want. Milwaukee tools. A drawer full of channel locks. Channel lock is one of the companies that I'd like to like to offer at some point. Uh, and I found this amazing drawer organization system to complement the foam inserts from Sonic. Uh, but I've found this company called Tool Grid that I'm going to be uh, uh, putting in these cabinets that have uh, loose tools that aren't part of the Sonic line. Uh, so I'm going to be chasing that here shortly as well. Hey, my name is Freddie. I have a YouTube channel called Tavarish, and this is my shop. So this shop is 5,200 square feet. It's a little bit bigger than what I have back home. I have a two car garage. In this space is where I store all of my project cars. Uh, the ones that I buy for cheap and the ones that I buy for a little, little more than cheap. And I uh, fix them up and hopefully have a little fun with them in the process. The length and width of the shop, I think it's like 70 by something a little more than 70, and then you get to 5,200. The lighting in the shop is actually uh, pretty on the cheap. I got all these lights from Amazon. I think they're like 20 bucks a piece. Yeah, the lighting is pretty good in here, but it was, I think all in, I'm like at 300 bucks in lighting. So the floors are pretty special. They are epoxy floors by Cimarron Coatings and they have this cool design. It almost looks like it's a, it's a deep ocean type thing. It uh, comes off as blue on camera and I love it, but they're not the best for actually working on them because they do scratch kind of easily. And I'm not the most clean person in the world. So keeping up with maintenance and all that stuff, it's, uh, it's a little much, but when they're clean, they look awesome. It's a little hard to find bolts though. All right, so this is my garage. I keep all my cars parked on this side. You see a lot of different types of cars. You have a little bit of JDM style here, Nissan Pulsars. You have some Euro Flare, Euro Muscle actually, with the SL55 AMG. You have a Japanese Icon. You have the 300ZX non-turbo. That's gonna have an engine swap in its future. We have something that I'm concocting out of my own brain. This is gonna be a GT1-ish sort of Lambo-inspired something coming to a SEMA near you. We have a Lamborghini Gallardo uh, that has twin turbos and a roof that sorta kinda works, it doesn't. And we have the last manual R8 ever made. It's not mine, it's my friend Eric's. And we have a Supra over there that I built with a friend in four days. And now it has a big turbo and it has a bunch of other stuff that makes it really, really fast and really fun to drive. And up there is something I can't really talk about because that's gonna be for another episode on my channel. Here's my four post lift. I absolutely love it. My Ben Pack four post lift. It's great for parking and also you can work underneath it. But my two post lift takes the cake because I've always wanted one of those things. And well, I have my Bentley on and it's been there for like three months, but it's, it's getting done. And uh, as you can see, the wheels are off and I can do lots of things underneath that thing. But these things are really cool. These are my tire mounting and balancing solution. This is a tire mounting machine and I sorta of kinda of know how to use it now. And over here you can see my enormous mess. Now, for those of you who don't know me, 
I am a little bit messy, but this is, this is overboard. So the reason why it's like this is because I had a SEMA build. I had a Lamborghini that I was building and I was up till two and three in the morning every night trying to get that ready. And when you're doing that, you tend to get a little messy like I do and I just left everything everywhere. But here's my parts rack. It also doubles as a 2007 Range Rover. So uh, right now it's not doing much. It's just holding some clothes and a bottle of water. But behind there is, uh, well, are some interesting projects. I have Matt Farah's Million Mile Lexus that actually does have a million miles on it. And I think it leaked about a million gallons of oil onto my floor. Uh, this is my 95 Ferrari F355 with just a little bit of smoke and fire damage in the back. So that's gonna get redone. And this is also a Ferrari F355 and I'm going to mix the two together. So I'm making this spider into a hard top coupe and then maybe doing some like wide body stuff. But here is where the magic happens. This is my, my bathroom, this is just a regular bathroom. So yeah, it's a, you do bathroom stuff in there. But that is basically it. And I apologize if this was a bit dirty, but this is, uh, this is the life of somebody who works on cars for YouTube.